Good morning. I'm late, but I'm present. Uh, good morning and good morning. <laughs> All right. Good morning. What a great day the Lord has made. Song I heard this morning uh, by Juanita Bynum, Dr. Juanita Bynum. It was, uh, I don't mind waiting. I guess it's true for us too. I don't mind waiting on the Lord because the Lord is good to us. He is faithful to his children. We are grateful for his brand new mercies. Let me tell you, I need some brand new mercies today. I need the faithfulness of God. I need the God who never, never, never fails. God never fails. I'm grateful for the mighty God we serve. I'm grateful for all that he's done and for what he's doing. Good morning, Tatiana, Kendall, and Ava. Good morning, Colin and Kobe. Good morning. Aren't these kids out of school? Nashayla and Josiah? I don't know. But good morning, everybody. Lord, Sister Mary made it. You made it. Hallelujah. Praise God for all of you. God bless you many, many fold over. Good morning and good morning to everybody. This weekend while I was at, uh, they're not out of school. Okay, well, you know, I wouldn't know. But, all right, well, hello all you little people. And so this weekend I had a chance to meet one of uh, our, the Facebook viewers, um, Eunice Berry Ter Terrell, or did I do it backwards? I probably did it backwards. But Sister Eunice, great seeing people. And you know, I think the thing is, is that most times when I meet people, I forget to take a picture. Good morning, Brother Prophet. And, um, but I'm so grateful for each of you who do watch. I want on the 20th, got it. Thanks, Sister Linda. Um, I want to get started. I want to talk today about, um, we're going to go to Luke chapter 10. And um, when we understand this passage, I think it will help us. When we were growing up, our parents would, uh, would help us to uh, quiet ourselves. One game that we played was called the quiet game. Kids would struggle with that right now because being quiet is not uh, uh, celebrated as much as it should. But um, when we understand uh, of learning to calm ourselves and to be at peace and to have quiet in your head, in your atmosphere. So we're looking at two women today. The scripture talks about uh, Mary and Martha. And the way the Lord gave it to me was that he's calling me higher by sitting at his feet. By sitting at his feet. There's a book I read some years ago. It says, having a merry heart, M-A-R-Y, in a Martha world. Having a merry heart in a Martha world. A world that always requires you to be busy doing something. Always trying to capture it to take your time. Always trying to push you into something else. But we need a heart like Mary. Having a heart like Mary, even if we are busy. So I want to read this to you. I don't typically read this because I only have 15 minutes and I wanted to share with you specifically what the Lord had with, shared with me. But in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, he says, Now it came to pass, you know, I love that phrase, and it came to pass. Because we understand that in the process of time, God orchestrates, God orders, God catapults us into our next. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her home. So Martha's busyness wasn't a terrible thing. It was just not the right thing in that season. You've got to know what season you're in. You've got to know what season you're in. Good morning, Sister Eunice. Good seeing you yesterday. God bless you many fold over. And he says a woman named Martha, not Mary, Martha was the one who was outgoing, who was vocal, who was social. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard two things. Sat at his feet and heard his word singular. Oh, there's so much to share about that. Let me finish it. Maybe I'll, we'll get back to it. But Martha was encumbered about much serving. She was busy serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? I'm the one that invited you to my house. But the woman's woman's place, and I know this is so pertinent considering some things that were made by, um, recently by, by a Bible scholar, but in, in a sense, Martha's saying, the woman's place is in the kitchen to help me serve. 
You need to know what season you're in. You remember that while I'm talking, okay? And this is not just for women. This is about people knowing your season and what you should be doing. Are you not concerned? Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? But where was, where was Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus? Where was she sitting at verse um, 39 says, sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word. Sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word. Sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word. Bid her therefore that she help me. Come make my sister get up from your feet and hearing your word to come help me serve. She go, he go, the Lord answers her and said, Martha, Martha, you are careful about and troubled about many things. Let me stop there. This passage is saying, you are filled with anxiety and worry and care about all these things. You are overwhelmed by the things that are necessary for what you think are necessary. But you must prioritize what is necessary. You must prioritize what is necessary in this season. Verse 42 says, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, was Jesus saying, hey, Trenton Titus, was Jesus saying that we didn't need to be fed? We didn't need food? Did he, was he saying, don't worry about cooking, just come on over and sit down? He was saying, you must choose this in this season because this season don't last long. The ability to sit at the feet of Jesus and to hear his words for yourself is only going to be a little while. It's only going to be a little while. And people will try to put you in that little box of what you should be doing uh, in your season. You need to know what season you're in. And sometimes we don't know because we're so encumbered about with many things. The most important thing, I am not saying women of God, your house needs to be nasty because you're seeking the Lord. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying woman who goes out and preaches and minister that it's okay for your children to be unkempt and your husband to be missing uh, what he needs from a wife. Your first duty is at the house. But even at the house, you should be able to seek the Lord. You should be able to be uh, help to pray, to pray and to cover and to be prepared for your next. We must prioritize when we're in a season. The season doesn't last forever. But this season that they were in was limited. How many years did Jesus live and minister? He lived 33, but only three years of that was spent in intensive ministry. They were there in that season. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Now it came to pass. During that time period, we understand that Jesus was to impact the lives of people. You know the story with Mary and Martha and their brother named Lazarus. But we must also see that for this moment, Jesus said, Mary has chosen the good part. What was that good part? To sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear his word. To hear so that her life can be changed for her next. What was her next? Her brother, Lazarus, died. Wasn't Martha the one who said, if you had been here, you should have come when we called you. Remember, Martha was the one who was vocal. Martha was the one who was out there who was always saying things. But you must choose in, the, in this season. I need to seek the Lord. I need to sit at his feet. I need to learn how to quiet myself. I need to learn how to hear him. And that's what I'm trying to do is help you to understand you need to hear God. Let me read this to you from my mama's old Bible. It says, And as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. 
Her sister Mary sat on the floor listening to Jesus as he talked. But Martha was the jittery type and was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Sir, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. When somebody has their own season. Now, Martha, what she was doing wasn't wrong. But the problem was she wanted her sister to do what she was doing. But it wasn't her season to be doing that. She chose what she should have been doing, and that was sitting at the feet of Jesus. So she was something would be imparted into her, so that she would have the necessary tools for the next. That she would be prepared and put on all the tools and the garments that she needed so she could be successful. Many times we don't succeed in our next because we ain't hearing God. We're not listening to God. We're listening to everybody else. We're busy doing all the things that everybody else says we ought to do, rather than in the face of God, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the scripture says all these things will be added to us. The things you can control, you can control, but you can't control everything. You cannot control everything. What you do control, you should be able to control it using the wisdom through the word of God. One thing is needful is what Jesus says. One thing is needful. That one thing is for Mary to sit at, the, at my feet and to hear my word. Doing those two things will help you in your next season. I know that many of you aren't farmers and I am not a farmer. However, I grew up in an atmosphere at my home where we had a fields, plural. We had the near field, the far field, and we had a garden. And we had chicken and cows and hogs and horses. And I understood that in certain seasons, you planted certain vegetables. If you plant them out of season, they don't produce what they should. We must understand the season that we're in. If it's our past, it's gone. We can't undo that. But where we are now, we should be planting and sowing. We should be trying to, to gather in and to sow the seeds necessary so we get a harvest in our next. So we do what? Get a harvest in our next. Jesus said to Martha. I, I want to deal with Martha one more again. Martha should get up and help her because that was what women did. I'm not arguing that. I am saying that because Martha was the jittery type and worried about making sure everything was perfect for Jesus, that she didn't spend time with Jesus. She was worried about everything being presentable, presentable for Jesus, that she didn't spend time with Jesus. We can be so busy preparing to preach that we don't spend time with Jesus. You can be so busy doing all the necessary things that are the pre -re prerequisites for whatever is next that you never get in the face of Jesus. You don't sit at his feet and hear his word. I hope this is coming clear. I'm not sure. I'm hoping I'm clearly articulating what I'm saying. But I need us to understand that sitting at his feet heals us of our past. Sitting at our feet Heals us of what the enemy has said. Heals us from what we believe that's contrary to the word of God. But the Lord said to her, Martha, dear friend, you are so upset over all these details. We can be encumbered about, busy, worried, anxious about things that God isn't even consumed with. I, I always feel like I need to give caveats because I don't want somebody to, to go off on, on, the, on the left wing and decide. She's saying, I got to clean my house. I need to, I need to just uh, spend time with the Lord. You better spend time with the Lord while you vacuum and mop. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. You need to spend time with the Lord while you're doing the necessary things at your house, at your home, balancing your checkbook, 
Don't just say the Lord going to take care of my account. I'm going to write a faith check. You better balance your account and make sure you've got money in there and make sure that you're wise spending because otherwise the little foxes come and destroy your vine. You'll be spending time with the Lord and the Lord is saying, get up and go clean. You think it's the devil. You, the Lord is saying, get up and go spend time with your husband and, and you think it's the enemy trying to rob you. It's God trying to save you. That's another subject for another day. You are so upset over all these details, but there is only one, really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. Have you discovered the one thing that is, what did Jesus say? Is worth being concerned about. Have you discovered the one thing that is worth being concerned about? We get concerned about our children, grown children. You're concerned about other grown folk to the degree that you worry yourself. You fret about folk who are making their own decisions. And when you leave this earth, they'll still be doing what they want to do. You worried about um, uh, people who doing things that you know ain't right, but you still, you're over, they are grown. They need, they need to, to discover it for themselves. You spend all your time giving your money away to folk who are just, you, it's not even good ground. You're just giving your time and your energy to people and things that are consuming you, but it's not the thing you need to do. I, I feel like I need to give so many caveats because I don't know the dynamics of where you are. So, you know, spend time in the word of God. Be clear. Get good godly counsel, not just old folk because all old people are not wise people. You better let me say that again for you. All old people are not wise people. There was an old prophet who told a young prophet, you come on to my house and eat. The Lord said it was all right. But God had already told the prophet, young prophet, don't eat nothing, don't talk to nobody, go and do what I said and leave. The old prophet lied. But he was an old prophet who lied. And as the young man was eating, the meat was in his mouth. The old prophet told the truth and said, God said, because you didn't obey him, you're going to die in this land. You will not be buried with your fathers. You better learn to hear the voice of God for yourself. There is really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and I won't take it away from her. Beloved, one thing is necessary. To sit at the feet of Jesus and to hear his voice. If you don't understand anything else I'm saying, I'm saying that in order to get to your next and to be successful, you must sit at the feet of Jesus, hear his voice, hear his word. It's not about you getting um, on Facebook and doing what I'm doing. I'm not saying you can't. I'm not saying you can. I am saying the priority is to get his word, to read it, to feed your spirit, to feed yourself to the word of God becomes second nature to you, that your, your mind is changed, that we reflect the image of God, that you know what his word says so you're able to live by it. As newborn babes, we desire the sincere milk of the word. Why? That we will grow thereby. If you don't apply the word of God that you know, you're not going to grow. Just going to church and falling out isn't enough. Going to church and getting on the altar and we greasing you down is not enough. We must choose, we must discover the good part. We must discover the part that is worth being concerned about. And that is sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his voice. Get in his word. My time is gone. My alarm has already gone off. Um, but I, I want you to understand, in order for us to have a successful next, whatever that is, and I've been hearing it through some of the messages at my church and other places that I've listened, they may use the different, different terminology, but it's saying the same thing. God is getting me ready for my next. God is getting me ready for my next. I want to be able to put on the armor that I need for my next. I want to be able to understand what I should for my next. I want to be able to be like a child that is weaned from his mother, that I'll be able to stand strong and, and, and be able to, to resist the enemy. He's getting me ready for my next. Keep us, and, and, and that's it, Sister Glenda. We need to sit at the feet of Jesus so that as God exalts us, we don't get exalted, we get humbled. We get humbled. We get humbled. I'm humbled that people actually look and watch this video, any video, 
Because people don't have to. People don't have to be nice to you. People don't have to bless you. They don't have to say encouraging. They don't have to, no matter how much they love Jesus. They do not have to do positive things for you. I don't take that for granted. Neither should you. But as God exalts us, the scripture says, I was saying this when I was at Harvest, but it's true. If we humble ourselves, he will exalt us. If we submit ourselves to him, he will exalt us. Also, as we are submitting ourselves and humbling ourselves before him, he exalts us. But he also says, if you submit yourselves, therefore, to God, humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. But he also says that the enemy will flee from you. He will run from you in terror. Not that you're worried about the enemy. Not that I'm concerned about what the devil is doing. I'm not ignorant of what the devil is doing, but I'm not consumed by what he's doing because all my time is spent submitting before the Lord, yielding myself before him. And as I'm doing that, he's taking me where he wants me to go. Does that make sense? I need you to understand this. Whatever your next is, I don't care if it's you going to visit folk in the nursing home. If it's you making socks and, or buying socks and taking it to them with a little piece of peppermint. Whatever it is, we need to find ourselves impacting people for the kingdom of God. Let's not be so busy with ministry work that we don't hear what we should be doing sitting at the feet of Jesus. Sometimes it's just the words we hear can bless us. The words we hear will impact our lives. When you and I gave this example the other day, my time is gone. I apologize. Um, when we um, when we have somebody that we love, just their presence brings enthusiasm and excitement to us. We should find that when we're in the presence of the Lord. He should make me smile. All right. It's so enough of that. Tomorrow morning we'll talk about something else. But I hope you've got that. Please catch the replay. If you, if you didn't get it all, go back and watch it. Please share this video. But let's pray. Father, we thank revealed that your anointing is breaking every yoke. Let the entrance of your word bring light into our lives, to our situations. Help us to see, to hear, and to discern. Help us to see, to hear, and to discern. Help us to sit at your feet and to hear your voice. Open our understanding that we will hear clearly. We thank you for what you've begun in us and what you will finish. You said you'll finish what you started. Finish it in us, dear God. Open the door before us as we prepare for the end of this year, the beginning of the next. Thank you that our next will be filled with us walking humble before you and not fearful of our future because we have confidence in you. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. You're our healer. Oh, thank you for healing our bodies, our minds, our wounded spirits. Heal us that we'll be the ones filled with hope and expectation of good. Where every voice that's contrary to hope and expectation of good, we cast aside. Every negative voice, we say no to. Every negative thought, we cast down in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for it. We believe it and receive it done in Jesus' mighty name. And so it is. Amen. All right, time's gone. Let's move on to our next. All right, uh, please share the video. I'd appreciate that. And join me in the morning at 7.15. And we'll look again at our next point, which is number seven. Um, I believe that's right. The next thing that, that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you tomorrow. And uh, to invite somebody to join you. Thank you to those of you who host watch parties. Let's spread the word of God. Let's spread the word of God because the earth shall be filled with the word of God. It brings change into our lives. Join me in the morning and we'll look again. And remember this time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Don't forget in 2020, I'm going to have a new page and it's called Graced for Today. And I hope that you'll make sure that you join it. I'll do both, I think. But um, I want you to get ready for your next. Have a great day. Pray for somebody else. Have a good day, everybody. Peace.